the law. So that is the basis of our contention. Sure. That we disagree with them. Yeah. So uh, uh, anything else, I mean, Oli is better than everybody. Like all the investigative institutions in the country, and she, she, uh, and, and the third part is trouble. None of you is saying to her, uh, or, or saying even to um, uh, prosecuting authorities, arrest police and bake. Police and bake uh, claims she's got evidence that can, uh, 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 that is so solid that it can compel the state to charge the president and the deputy president of the EF. She is in essence defeating the ends of justice because uh, how can we have such evidence that is indicating so much, that you believe in so much, but you are not presenting it? And, and okay, if 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 if, if really for you as well, I'm sure wherever she stays, there's a police station around. She could have gone, gone to the police station and open a case and and take us to court. But she can't say she can't say to us, take me to court. Who is she to tell us what to do? Because essentially, what she says is that we should be dictated by her on what the agenda of the EFF should be. We refuse to be told that there must be an agenda item in our... Mpile, she's, she's thrown out a very direct challenge to you. She says, accuse her of anything else, but is she wrong on the movement of the money uh, from Skameka to Floyd and to anywhere else where it went? And uh, is she wrong? She says, yeah, criticize me, call me names, but uh, is, uh, are my facts inaccurate? She is wrong. Okay, I'm saying to you, Tabo, if Oli has got clear, solid evidence, she knows where the police station is. I'm sure she's got some relationship with the director of the prosecution. Uh, 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 she can go to the office. Sure, but as, as journalists, our jobs are not to go and report everyone on the story that we work on. Our jobs are primarily to report, right? Uh, to the publics that uh, subscribe to our various media platforms. So that may not necessarily be her number one priority to go and report. But critically, that I'd like uh, something that I'd like you to respond to. Was this a loan? Was this a donation? Uh, money moving from Skameka to Floyd near Koshibambo? Uh, as the EFF, what explanation did you get from Floyd? So the money was a loan, and that's the explanation from the deputy president, which is uh, uh, even when we reached a conclusion that we actually yeah. encourage you to go to court and take the ethics committee to court. Tabo, there is an abidadi that was deposed by Gameka, by Brian Shibambo, as the sole shareholder of... Has Gameka. he started paying back the loan, Floyd? Come again. Has Floyd started paying back the loan? He's pa he has paid. You finished. He finished paying. Okay. And there was there a loan agreement in place? There was a loan agreement in place, yes. Which you've seen it was written? Yes, it is written. But the first part is trouble. All these questions you're asking me. If all the ethics committee, the ethics committee was supposed to ask the deputy president, they never did. He voluntarily himself yeah. then submitted back an affidavit. So if there was a problem with the affidavit that the deputy president has yeah. submitted, they should have then called the, the, the lender. They say, lender, come here. I mean, they know who he is. They won't know where he stays. They should have said, come here. I want you to explain yourself. We're receiving this from the borrower. And you're taking this to court, right? I mean, I'm, I'm, you're taking this to call and umpila with respect i'm just rushing you mainly because of time nothing else no, please no, don't don't no. don't deceive it to be anything else i apologize if i'm if i'm rude uh, in that regard no, okay. yeah um yeah, then uh, i was just asking are you taking the matter on review as we've heard right you take in parliament the, the, the deputy court. president has already briefed the lawyer yeah. the lawyer has briefed the, the council so he is not 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 the deputy president is okay. taking the matter yeah yeah so let's do the, the report yeah and uh, uh over and above Mpile, um this it has been said and polly has also reported on this that there is a pr machinery from the eff to try to do away with anything that has to do with vbs because it is somehow tainting your brand is vbs continuing to be a dark cloud above the brand eff it's not, not at all. And and Tabo, uh, uh, people are not going to speak about the EFS badly and we must keep quiet. I mean, we appreciate the platform that you are giving us yeah. where, where we come and explain to the nation our position and where we stand with this matter. It can be correct that only wants to speak alone. So everybody yeah. who's opposing the EFS must be speaking alone negatively about the EFS. Why don't you and take Polly to court? 
Why don't you take it to court and clean her out for defamation, for dragging your name through the mud, for the lies that she's been uh, uh, spreading about you? Why don't you take it to court once and for all? And the court will be the final arbiter on this issue, and then uh, it will be left alone. Yeah, but that's playing in the hands of the enemy. That's exactly what you want. And that's what I said to you earlier on. We will not be dictated by the enemy in the form of police and on what to put on the agenda of the EFF. Because once we take the matter to court, it means we had a meeting that sat down and discussed her and decided to take the matter to court. And it's going to drag us. We are on the ground. As but I'm you are seeking legal recourse. You're seeking legal recourse and finality to the matter. I don't think that anyone would see it as untoward. You're seeking, uh, the courts are the final arbiters on various disputes. There's a clear dispute on this, and uh, you would want to get to that finality. No, there's no dispute. If uh, Polypan Dave was coming up with lies, then you guys are entertaining lies. The host has not found anything. Uh, uh, that CFO, two guys, is already serving 10 years in jail. Sure. Other, other people are, are already in court. None of those people look like Julius Malema, the president of the EFF, or even deputy president. So why must we be dragged to court by nobody? Sure. We are taking parliament to court because parliament has got the responsibility of being fair and not being biased. Um, not Pile, being I'm sadly fair. out of time. I, we, we should revisit this issue, but I appreciate you coming through at a short uh, space of uh, request uh, that we did to you. Really appreciate it. 29 after I'm 5, Bruce ahead. standing by. Bruce, what's happening in the markets? EWN Business. Some bad things and some good things. Uh, it's the way that the markets are, I'm afraid. Um, they, they never give everything away without any sort of uh, quid pro quo. So yeah, markets under quite a lot of pressure at the moment in, in terms of the currency market. But uh, weak currency driving Rand head shares. Rand head shares are dominant on the JSE. Of course, they make up the vast majority of the trade of shares on the JSE in terms of value. Uh, and so it's not surprising to see on a day where the Rand has weakened as sharply as it has, Amidst uh, U.S. jobs numbers that just won't slow down, the all share index up 685 points. We ended the day at 71,250. Gains across the board in the uh, markets were bolstered by Rand head shares. Gains for AB InBev, British American Tobacco and Richemont gold shares were stronger too. On the domestic market, however, we saw retailers uh, coming off quite sharply. True Worth lost 3%. Directors seem to be selling there quite vigorously. Investec, First Rand and Standard Bank are positive in the month of the financials. But it's the platinums that are getting the worst of the pain. Platinum group metals, uh, prices are falling sharply. That's hurting the miners that produce them. Two years ago, these guys could do nothing wrong. They were producing into a very high price environment. Everyone was celebrating it. They were paying huge taxes, paying huge dividends, paying bonuses. It was fabulous. That um, that uh, boat has sailed, however, and now with collapsing commodity prices, they are beginning to look at cutbacks, beginning to look at slowdowns, beginning to reconfigure their businesses, and it's hurting a lot. Platinum, a critical export, of course, for South Africa. Platinum price at 8.63 this afternoon. Uh, it's uh, platinum group metals like rhodium and others have fallen precipitously over the last 12 months. The gold price also down, 1,816 Brent crude oil. It's behaving the way we want it to behave, which is falling. We want every other commodity that we produce to go up and oil to go down. It doesn't play by our rules, unfortunately. Brent crude on the day that the fuel prices have rocketed. Brent crude at $85 a barrel. That's $10 a barrel cheaper than it was Friday last week. The Rand dollar exchange rate, 1953. The euro at 2057 and the pound at 23. 77. On the Money Show this evening, in addition to looking at today's market moves, confounding and confusing as they might be, uh, we're going to be looking at the huge bloodletting happening at the top of corporate South Africa, particularly in the public sector, particularly at Transnet, which has seen a third senior executive quit in less than a week, with uh, no indication as to how those spaces are going to be filled. Plus, at half past seven this evening, um, our personal finance feature, and uh, we've got Pablo Fatidis on small business. Uh, people are very cross with Pablo. Last week he said we shouldn't do things like remote work. Oh my goodness gracious me. It was like he pushed a nuclear button. Most exciting week we've had with all the responses. We'll pick up on that. Pick a fight with Pablo later on The Money Show. For time for eyewitness news headlines with Mikey Mulapo. Mikey, what's happening uh, in the news? I see that uh, there's an issue of uh, health food poisoning. Uh, and the Gauteng Health Department still goes on? 
Thanks, Sawa. Well, that's right. Good afternoon. Well, the Gauteng Health Department is urging communities to be more mindful about where they buy their food following the increase in alleged food poisoning incidents. This is four children died this week from alleged food poisoning caused by biscuits and snacks. The most recent incident is of four boys aged between two and six years from the West Rand who fell ill after allegedly consuming sweets and chips from a vendor in the Western area. Two of the boys died in hospital while the other two are recovering in hospital. In another incident, two four-year-old children in Naledi in Soweto died after eating biscuits believed to have been bought from a spaza shop. Spokesperson Modali Dalimudiba says the department's outbreak response teams in both Johannesburg and West Rand districts are on the ground. We have intensified our awareness campaigns on the ground to conscientize communities, but to also reach out to vendors and, and, and spaza shop owners so that we start to work together towards addressing this particular challenge. Charles Net has appointed Russell Baikis as acting chief executive following the resignation of its freight rail CEO, Sizam Zimela. Zimela, who sent a resignation letter yesterday, held the position for three years. Her departure comes days after Transnet Group CEO Portia Derby and Chief Financial Officer Nunkulule Kodlameni also stepped down from their positions. Zimela also faced immense pressure from the rail agency's board, business and organized labor for her to step down. The embattled state-run ports and logistics company is facing financial woes, as well as rail network that's falling apart, which could lead to massive retrenchments of about 35,000 miners. Kozala Natal's Community Safety Department says it will convene a multi-party committee to focus on political tolerance. This comes after the high rate of politically related killings in the province. More recently, councillors in the Nongoma local municipality in northern KwaZulu-Natal have been targeted. And with the 2024 general elections approaching, the provincial government says something has to be done. Vanta Mabaso has more. The Community Safety Department in KwaZulu-Natal says it wants to prevent political killings instead of having to act when someone is killed. MECC Poshomuga says political parties in the province will have to join hands in this regard. When that is all been to reconvene a multi-party political intervention committee to ensure that we work towards achieving political tolerance in our province. The intervention committee is set to meet in Deben next Monday. The provincial government says it hopes this will bring about political stability among parties. Ntlan Slamabaso Eyewitness News, Deben. And Public Enterprises Minister Pravin Gordon says the amount of... Gordon also says private small-scale embedded generation has cost metros like Buffalo City in the Eastern Cape over 300 million rand in the electricity sales. He says while this is a welcome move, it poses a significant challenge for municipalities. Gordon was responding to a written parliamentary question from DAMP Caleb Katalia, who asked the minister what the impact of private solar generation was on electricity sales to municipalities. Reports. Minister Praveen Gordon says recently released data by ESCOM suggests that from March 2022 until the first quarter of this year, the amount of electricity generated by small-scale embedded generation in the form of solar panels has risen 350%. Gordon says this increase in reliance on renewable energy is a welcome development for the environment but poses a significant challenge to municipalities. He says municipalities derive most of their income from electricity sales. Gordon says figures from Buffalo City Metro reveal that private solar generation has cost the municipality 350 million rand in electricity sales. Gordon